minority then. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll try to keep that in mind. Uh, here's one of the things I just went to get. <coughs> um, and I happened to be there when I was getting some other things. Uh, I'm a collector. Uh, I'm a horribly addicted collector. Uh, used to be eBay, but eBay doesn't have as many radioactive and cool things as they used to. They, they've, <laughs> they've limited what they do. And I can't even remember where I got this thing. These are supposed to be um, some of the cabling that you have on an implosion type uh, nuclear weapon. Uh, a lot of nuclear weapons, as you know, have been disassembled. A lot of that work has occurred in New Mexico. And I have scarfed up weapons, well, weapons parts. I guess I don't have a whole weapon. Um, and I'll show you someone, but that's supposed to be one. And if anybody you know, really knows this technology, can say, yes, Jay, that's right or that's wrong, I'd love to know. Uh, we're all, I'm, I'm a little gullible. You know, I want it to be true, so I acquired it. We do have somebody who might know. I imagine this was sort of the ignition wires for the implosion device, which we'll talk a little bit. You guys probably know all about those already. No. <laughs> It could be. Certainly the, the quality. Um, awesome. What I was looking for is an MC number. If you, if you find a part with an MC number, uh, that's, ma major, that's good. major component that the attendee doesn't know the thing. Uh, that's good. OK, so we're not so sure on this one, but it's plausible. OK, guys, um, energy. Uh, let's talk first of about chemical reactions and then about nuclear reactions. There are some fascinating and fun differences. Uh, this is a hydrogen molecule. Two hydrogen atoms stuck together with a bond. This is an oxygen molecule, or maybe it's two red balls with springs between them or whatever. But at any rate, hydrogen and oxygen, you can burn them and you can make water. And when you do that, it's an exothermic reaction. It gets really, really hot. Uh, it's also what we call a chain reaction. Now, I want to explain why in detail when you burn things, they get hot. If you're going to burn these two components and end up with this, what you have to do first is bust these apart. It's just like Tinker Toys. You've got to pull them apart and then reassemble them. That's why you need a high temperature uh, to get things going. The way you normally break these things apart is to make the mixture hot enough that the speeds of these things, when, when the temperature is higher, molecules move faster. Speeds of these things are enough so that they whack into each other and break each other apart. That's why there's such things as ignition temperatures. We have to disassemble before we reassemble. Once you've got them busted apart, then these pieces are going to come back together again. And the key for the whole reaction being exothermic, a reaction which creates heat, therefore can create pressure, therefore be used to make ordinary chemical bombs, is that when the parts are pulled back together in this new molecule, as opposed to the old molecules, the force with which they're pulled in is much stronger than the force that they were held together with in the old molecules. And they arrive at their new locations with a huge amount of extra kinetic energy as this ball gets pulled in at the last moment. It's got way more speed than it needs. It's shaking, and that means it's hot. And it shares that energy with the neighbors, and everything's moving fast, which means everything's hot. So the reassembly pulls these things really hard, and that's why it gets hot, because speed is temperature in the case of chemical reactions. Uh, it's a chain reaction because I didn't bring any matches, and I actually set off the fire alarm at our school by mistake. And it wasn't even with a fire. I mean, I should have set it off with a fire. I, I, was, I had a fire extinguisher, and one of the things I like to do is shoot off carbon dioxide fire extinguishers because it makes carbon dioxide snow. Uh, you guys probably don't do that. Maybe some of you do that. <laughs> and so I picked up an extinguisher that I thought was a carbon dioxide extinguisher. It was one of those yellow powder things. And I was aiming at the ceiling right where the smoke detector is. And Everybody had to leave their classrooms for an hour. It was very embarrassing. We, so here, uh, uh, fire, combustion is a chain reaction. If I were to take a match like I do in my classroom and take a piece of paper and light it down here, the reason I have to light it to get it started, I need that high temperature to get the molecules shaking, to bust them apart so they can reform in that tighter configuration. So I light it here, and I hold the paper, and it burns, and it burns, and it burns, and it burns, and it'll burn all the way through. Well, how did it get to burn here if I only ignited it here? What we need over here to get it started is the same thing we needed here. We needed high temperature, lots of thermal energy, but that's provided by the burning of the paper next door. I get this hot, then it gets the next piece of paper hot, which means it can react, which means it produces more thermal energy, which then heats the next piece of paper. You, the, the chain of the chain reaction is the thermal energy and the high temperature. Fires produce it, fuel needs it to burn. 
And so we can just snowball and burn down the whole forest. Chain reaction. Uh, in the case of, oh, these are my notes. In the case of a nuclear fission reaction, we're only going to talk about the bombs that were developed, worked on in Los Alamos. Uh, it has nothing to do with the electrons, only to do with the nucleus. That what the electrons are doing and their energy is utterly negligible. For these guys, the electrons have everything to do with what they're doing. We haven't talked about them, but they are everything to do with chemistry. Their rearrangement is what results in the, the reaction being exothermic. Nuclear reactions, absolutely nothing to do with that. <coughs> there are fissionable uh, nuclei, uranium-235 and plutonium-239 are the two materials that Los Alamos worked on during the war. And you can, I, I, I love, hate these graphics, and I don't know if this is even going to show. But, you know, we got a big nucleus here. One of the things I hate in, in uh, school materials, this one probably doesn't commit the crime. But if they show a carbon-14 nucleus, they'll show 14 uh, protons and neutrons total on one side of a solid sphere. I don't know what's in the middle and on the other side, but they'll show 14 little balls on the side you can see. That's dumb. Um, do, we <laughs> do we need this thing? Help me out here, guys. I don't <laughs> um, so this one may be OK. And the, the key with nuclear reactions, if you, the nuclear reaction is the splitting of a nucleus in terms of what Los Alamos did. OK. Uh, is, uh, yeah, right. I'll try. Do you guys use these things when you're in your classes? It's foreign technology to me. Okay, all right. Uh, the overall game is we want to make this guy fall apart into two pieces. Uh, and the way you get the reaction started typically is with a little neutron coming along. Somehow we'll talk about all the details here as we move along. But for certain nuclei, uranium-235, plutonium-239, for sure, when you do that, then the nucleus will, within 10 to the minus 12th of a second, of a, a picosecond, it'll fall apart. It's unstable. Um, and it comes apart in two pieces, and then some more neutrons are created. Now, what I hate about diagrams like these, I, this, this is the wrong geometry. If you really have a neutron come along and hit a nucleus, the, the, the reason why these guys then move away from each other, w once the nucleus gets started in two pieces, now, even those of you who aren't upper school science teachers, the nucleus has got protons and neutrons in it. The protons are positively charged. The neutrons are neutral. So we now have two positively charged things right next to each other, new, new nuclei, having been formed by that guy falling apart. What do two positively charged things do to each other? They push. And they're gonna, if that's what's going to happen,